Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to replace the front brakes, which includes the rotors and pads on a third generation Dodge Ram. This is a 2006 4x4 model equipped with the 5.7 liter V8, so there may be some variations between the models. In order to produce this video, Bosch has been kind enough to provide me with the parts required for the replacement. First start by safely elevating the front of the truck and use a jack stand as a safety. Then remove the wheel, I will be replacing one side at a time. Also crack the master cylinder reservoir cap to relieve any pressure when pushing back the pistons in the calipers. Compress the pistons in the caliper using large interlocking pliers. Using a 13mm socket, 3 inch extension and a 3 8 drive ratchet, remove a caliper bolt which goes into the floating pins. There are two in total. If you do find the sliding pins are spinning, they have a spot for a 17mm wrench to hold them in place. Once done, then lift off the caliper and tie it off using a bungee cord. Don't put strain on the rubber flex line as you may damage it. Remove the inner and outer pads. I did notice the pads were stuck into place which can cause the brakes to drag. If you are keeping your rotors, don't hit the rotors with a hammer or pry against them. Mine are getting replaced, so I'm not too worried about that. Remove the anti-rattle clips, as new ones are supplied with the new pads. Using a 21mm socket with a half inch drive ratchet, remove the two bolts on the caliper carrier. Using a breaker bar for added leverage to help break them loose if required. While you're doing brake work, it's always a good idea to inspect other suspension components such as your control arms, tie rods, wheel bearing, etc. to determine if any other components are in need of a replacement. I did find a loose upper ball joint, so that'll get replaced as well, and be sure to keep an eye out for that video. Finally, the rotor can be removed. If the rotor is stuck into place, use the assistance of a hammer. If you are keeping the rotor, only hit between the wheel studs, otherwise you can risk damaging the rotor. It's a good idea to clean up the hub for any surface rust using a wire brush. Then wash the hub and dust shield using brake cleaner. Clean the carrier with a wire brush, especially the mounting points. The pads should sit freely into place with no binding. Compare the old and new rotors to ensure they are the same. As mentioned earlier, Bosch has been kind enough to provide me with the brake parts in order to produce this video. For rotors, these are Bosch's QuietCast Premium Brake Rotors, which are 100% balanced for smooth operation and have a bimetal aluminum zinc coating to help prevent rusting, giving that clean rotor look, especially on vehicles with more open wheels while providing a long life. Due to the new coating, these do not have a oil coating, so there's no need to clean them during the installation process. Install the rotor, a lug nut can be used to hold it into place for easier installation of the pads and caliper. Reinstall the caliper carrier. These bolts were cleaned up using a wire brush, then applied a medium grade thread locker. The torque specifications for the carrier bolts is 130 foot pounds or 176 newton meters. If any dirt or grease gets on the rotor, it'll need to be cleaned up as this can cause brake surface issues. One of my slide pins did have a ripped boot so that will need to be replaced. If yours is ripped as well, it's best not to drive the vehicle as you can get dirt inside, eventually seizing and causing braking issues. I'll have to make a trip up to the parts store to get a replacement boot. My slide pins do move freely, however, I like to clean up the old grease just to be safe. Use brake wipes to clean up the pins and even the holes, then apply new grease. The caliper should be able to move freely. As for the brake pads, Bosch has also provided me with their Quiet Cast Premium versions. Compare the old and new pads to ensure they are the same. Both the inner and outer pads are the same on this truck. Install the anti rattle clips onto the brake pads. They only install in one orientation. Then install the pads into place. Again, these should move freely with no binding. And finally reinstall the caliper. The pistons should be pushed back all the way from previously. If not, push them back now. Clean up the slide pin bolts using a wire brush and apply medium grade thread locker. Tighten the caliper slide pin bolts. The torque specifications for these bolts is 24 foot pounds or 32 newton meters. If you do find the slide pins are spinning, they do have that spot for a 17 millimeter wrench to hold them into place. 
Reinstall the wheel. The torque specifications for the 22 millimeter lug nuts is 135 foot pounds or 183 newton meters. Moving on to the opposite side, again safely elevate the truck and place a jack stand under the truck as a safety. Remove the wheel. Compress the piston and the caliper using large interlocking pliers. These are two piston calipers, so you have to work between the top and bottom to ensure it's fully pushed back. Use a 13 millimeter socket, 3 inch extension and 3 inch drive ratchet to remove the two caliper slide pin bolts. Remove the caliper and tie it off using a bungee cord. Remove the old brake pads. Again, I did find this side to be stuck as well. With dragging brakes, you'll find the vehicle to be harder on fuel, may appear to be sluggish, can cause your brakes to wear out quicker and cause extreme heat, warping the rotors. Using a 21mm socket with a half inch drive ratchet, remove the two bolts on the caliper carrier. Remove the carrier. Then remove the rotor. Using a wire brush, clean up any rust on the hub face. Wash the hub face and dust shield using brake cleaner to remove any brake dust and dirt. Reinstall the new rotor. Use a lug nut to hold the rotor into place for easier installation of other components. The mounting surfaces where the pads sit should get cleaned up with a wire brush. They must be able to move freely without any binding. Next is cleaning up the caliper carrier bracket bolts and apply medium grade thread locker. Reinstall the caliper carrier. The torque specifications for the carrier bolts is 130 foot pounds or 176 newton meters. Remove the old grease from the slide pins, inspect the boots and replace if required, then apply new grease. Install the anti-rattle clips supplied with the brake pads and then install the pads. Put the caliper back into place. The caliper slide pin bolts were cleaned up using a wire brush and had medium grade thread locker applied. Install the caliper pin bolts. The torque specifications is 24 foot pounds or 32 newton meters. Again, if you do find those pins spinning, use a 17 millimeter wrench to hold them into place. Reinstall the wheel. The torque specifications for the 22 millimeter lug nuts is 135 foot pounds or 183 newton meters. Tighten up the master cylinder reservoir cap. Before starting the truck, be sure to pump your brakes so the pistons are pushed back out and you're officially done. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.